Hello. So in this video, I want to talk about how to fail your way to success, or in other words, how to embrace failure and learn from it. And it's an important part uh, to learning and getting better and to ultimately landing that job that you want or achieving that goal or finishing that project. So I'm also going to tell a story about the worst interview of my life, uh, which was at Goldman Sachs when I was 18 years old and how it helped me to actually land my first programming job. So think back to the last time you played a game like Super Mario Brothers, right? Um, or a pla any platformer game. Uh, in fact, I made a game uh, just recently called Curse Castle where the goal is to get to the finish line, but the game is very difficult uh, and it throws challenges your way. You will fail. There's no way you will get through this game on the first try without failing at least a few times. I dare you to try it. I'll put a link in the description. But the goal is that you play these games and, and you, you expect to fail. Sometimes you put the controller down, you take a break, you step away, you go back to it. But if you persist, you're going to get through the game. Because every time you fail, you're going to learn something new. And you gain the skills through time in order to beat each level, beat each boss. I mean, did you ever think that the game is just going to get easy after you defeat some particularly difficult game? No, it's going to get harder and harder you're going to get better and eventually you're going to beat the game if you, if you do persist. And so this experience is not unique to video games. It's just like life, right? When you're starting out something new, you're learning a new skill, you're, you're developing a new, uh, a new craft that you want to work on, uh, making mistakes and failure is part of the process. And it's how we react to these mistakes and these failures that actually means all the difference. Learning a new skill involves making mistakes it means putting oneself in a position to fail so that you can learn and hopefully make only new mistakes as you go forward. And again, like games, I mean, you don't expect the game to get easy. In fact, you expect it to get more difficult and that's what makes it fun, right? Yet we spend precious energy in our life trying to avoid mistakes, trying to avoid failure. And I think that energy sometimes is misplaced. And we continue to evaluate risk and try and assess our move before we actually take action. And to no fault of our own, because anxiety and fear is built in. It's, it's part of our system, right? It serves an evolutionary purpose uh, to, for our body to remind us that we're facing a potentially challenging situation. In the worst case, sometimes our fears just overcome us, right? They prevent us from making any move. And so you don't even play the game. And if you don't play the game, how are you going to achieve the goal? How are you going to win? You can't. Embracing failure is the most important thing that we can do and learning from it. So let me tell you a brief story about my Goldman Sachs interview when I was uh, 18 years old. I knew I wanted to get out of school. I wanted to drop out of college. Uh, I, w I just wanted to start working. I wanted to program. I wanted to land my first real job. So I remember sending in my resume uh, to various places. And one day, it was in the summer of 1999, my mom, I heard my mom yell, we didn't have cell phones at the time, so she yells for me to pick up the phone, and it was a recruiter from Goldman Sachs. Of course, I was surprised that they were calling me, um, but they did. I submitted my resume and I said, you know, I wrote out some of my skills and the things that I wanted to do and, and, and showed him some of the games that I was making on the side, and, and he decided to give me a chance. He was a hiring manager, so he asked me some technical questions about binary search trees and the differences between that and hash tables. And I just so happened to be learning about binary search trees, I think, around that time. Probably got a book from the library or something. But I was able to answer his questions. And after that, they offered to fly me out to New York. I'd never been to New York before. I was living in Chicago. Fly me out to New York and do a round of interviews with Goldman Sachs for a programmer job. Of course, I agreed to do this, right? Why wouldn't I? It was, it was, it was my shot. And so I went and it was a single day. I flew in. I remember uh, taking a taxi from JFK downtown uh, Manhattan to Wall Street. Um, I remember eating a snack uh, near Battery Park, which I thought at the time was Central Park. And the interview was terrible. I remember sitting in a small room uh, where they put me. Um, I dressed up. I remember at that point uh, it was important to be dressed up in almost like a suit. So it was definitely business attire. And I remember a short, stocky man walked in and he put down a piece of paper on the table and he said, he gave me a pencil and he said, all right, solve the reader writer problem and I'll be back in 30 minutes. And I had no idea what he was talking about really. I mean, I'd heard about this. I remember hearing something about 
mutexes and semaphores. I knew it was related to multi-threaded programming, but I, I couldn't really understand what he was asking for. And so I should have asked him, but I allowed him to leave the room. So I wrote down, I drew some boxes and diagrams, some things that you know, I thought that he wanted. So he comes back and he says, nope, uh, that, that's completely wrong. Then he looks at my piece of paper and uh, looked a little surprised and he immediately started to draw on the whiteboard, which was, he wrote down some, I think it was like Python code or something, which was some basic code using semaphores that uh, was reading and writing from the same data in memory at the same time. This is a pretty simple problem. I'll put a link to the description on, on roughly how to solve it. But let's just say I completely bombed that. And the rest of the interviews didn't go uh, much better. I remember mostly staying in that room, except I rode the elevator to a high floor and was put into a glass office uh, where a man put down another piece of paper and said, all right, draw me the OSI layers, explain them to me. Again, no idea. I asked him what he meant. He talked about basically explaining the network model, uh, of which I had some knowledge. I understood uh, uh, the difference between TCP and UDP. I'd done some multi-threaded uh, networking programming on the side in one of my games. So I talked about it a bit, but I definitely did not do a good job, and I, nor did I answer exactly how he wanted to. The point is I went through these interviews, and I learned a lot about what I didn't know. So the four or five hours was over pretty quickly. Next thing I knew, I was taking a taxi back uh, to the airport. I knew I didn't do well, but I wasn't upset. I knew I wasn't qualified at the time, but also I didn't go home empty-handed, right? I had a list of things that I could go home and learn, and that to me was a bit exciting. I was young, right? And so I was just happy to get the chance to go and do that. So what did I do next? Well, I, I channeled that outcome and that failure and that excitement into the desire to learn. I spent the next few weeks at least writing code, uh, learning these concepts in anger uh, because I failed, because I felt like I should have known those things. You know, I learned about multi-threaded programming, I learned about the, the, the OSI layer model, I learned about dynamic programming, and these things that I just was not very familiar with. So I turned that embarrassing disaster of an interview into a way to identify weaknesses uh, and address them. The Goldman Sachs um, probably shouldn't have flown me out, but they gave me a gift, and that gift allowed me to land my dream job only a few months later. And that was that started my career, essentially. And so again, like I went out to New York kind of not really expecting to pass. It was an experience. And if one expects uh, to stumble uh, and to learn from it, you're already prepared to get back up and continue when you do. I mean, making an error is bad. It's not good. But not learning from it is far, far worse. And as I mentioned, I, I didn't feel shameful. The most important thing is to fail and learn without judgment. Do not judge yourself. When you do that, when you feel shame, it's a negative reinforcement. You want positive reinforcement. You want to be happy that you went through that experience and you have the chance to actually go forward and to make only new mistakes and to learn from the things uh, that you failed at. Often it's the fear of failure, not failure itself, that, it, that prevents someone from achieving their goals. So expect to fail and embrace it when you do, and you'll fail upward uh, to success. This is also why I say always be coding, because if you're always coding, you're gonna make mistakes, you're gonna learn new things, and you're only gonna get better at it.